So um, we can post this information session after um, this live session on YouTube. Um, and before we jump in, I just want to go over some technical notes. So one, we do have closed captions available for the Zoom room. If you click the CC icon at the bottom of your toolbar and enable them, you'll be able to see them. And you can also choose the transcription, which will appear on the side of your Zoom window. If you're watching this on YouTube, you can also uh, enable the closed captions by clicking the CC icon at the bottom of the YouTube video window. And we have shared some links in the Zoom chat that will take you to the various OAC Ontario Arts Council pages. So you have easy access to getting where you need to go. And for those watching on YouTube, we'll be sharing the links in the description below. So you also have easy access as well. Um, but before we like, you know, talk a little bit about the CAHOOTS are GTCs, and um, I'm going to take you all into a sharing of my screen so that I'll walk you through the application process. I just want to go over what the RGTCs are, um, because you, you may, this may be the first time you're applying for the RGTCs. And so what they are, I keep saying RGTCs, but what actually are they? Um, they're the recommender grants for theater creators. And this is um, a program under the Ontario Arts Council. And it's not exactly like the other grants the Ontario Arts Council offers because um, the Ontario Arts Council has chosen recommenders, which are arts organizations, to um, look through applications that artists apply to per company. And uh, those organizations are the ones who choose the applicants who are awarded the funds. And the program is active from September 2021. So there's already some um, recommenders, organizations whose deadlines have already passed because they're in September, but it runs all the way until January 2022. So there are a bunch of organizations throughout Ontario that have uh, deadlines up until um, mid-January. And we'll show you where to find all those deadlines and, um, and, and take a look at all the other organizations that are not just CAHOOTS, but there's many others that are accepting applications. Um, yeah, the other nitty gritty of what the RGTCs are is that uh, applicants can apply for a minimum of, of $1,000 and a maximum of $3,000. Um, it can be any number in between those amounts. And you can apply for the minimum, you can apply for the maximum, or you can give a very specific number. Um, the good thing about the RGTCs is that you don't need to provide a broken down a budget. So it's whatever number that is there, um, we'll see that on our end or organizations will see that on their end. Um, you might not get awarded uh, the amount that you asked for. So if you do apply for $3,000, you might only get awarded $1,000 if you are um, a successful applicant. Um, other than that, I think that's a, a pretty decent rundown of what the RGTCs are. Um, so I'm going to pass it over to Tanisha to talk a little bit more about the specifics of the CAHOOTS recommender grants, um, because each company has specific priorities and again, the deadlines. So Tanisha will speak a little bit more about that. Hi there. Um, so some of you may have been familiar with the program that preceded the RGTCs, which was called the TCRs, and that was the Theater Creators Reserve. The Theater Creators Reserve, if you're familiar with that, is what the RGTC is now. So they just changed the name. Um, and maybe some of you in the past applied for the Theater Creators Reserve and didn't really know that this recommender thing was actually the same thing. The CAHOOTS RGTC is really about um, us recommending to the OAC for funding playwrights and creators that we believe 
are doing really, really promising, really interesting work that is aligned with the mandate of CAHOOTS. So we have um, priority groups for our company and we recommend artists that fall within those groups. So if you are not familiar with CAHOOTS and you're just coming, coming to this uh, info session kind of blind, um, CAHOOTS is a company that is very specifically for artists that find themselves in the margins. So it was created um, 35 years ago as a company specifically for artists of color, and it has expanded its mandate to include all marginalized artists. So we now have a POC mandate, a queer mandate, a deaf and disability mandate as well. And any artist that, that qualifies artists with a disability, artists of color, um, queer artists, particularly queer artists of color and trans artists, um, are more than welcome to apply for um, CAHOOTS funding or funding from the OAC recommended by CAHOOTS. Um, so one of the things that I would really, really ask anybody who's interested in getting an RGTC specifically from us is to make sure that you are a creator that fall under our priority groups because if you're not, we, we can't fund you and it just becomes a waste of your time going through that whole application for nothing. Um, with regards to, ap to applying for RGTCs in general, I cannot stress enough, please make sure you know about the companies you're applying to. You know, Take some time, research the companies, make sure that the companies that you're applying to are in line with what you're doing. You might have a fantastic script but if you if you apply for an RGTC from Buddies in Bad Times and your script has no queer theme and you're not a queer writer, you're not going to get money from them. So make sure that you are aligned with whatever companies that you're applying to with their mandate, um, and that will, you know, at least put you in the running um, to be considered. Uh, one of the things that I really think is important to know is that companies are inundated with applications for RGTCs. Um, it's, it's a wonderful starting point for, for receiving grants. It can cover you know, your expenses for a couple of months and help you really buckle down and do your work, but they are hard, they are hard to get because they are in such demand. And each recommending company is only allotted a certain amount of money. You know, and how much you're allotted is kind of based on what your overall budget is, how big a company you are. Cahoots is a very small company. And so we are awarded a small amount of money. We are awarded, drum roll please, $17,000, one seven. That is obviously very, very small. And with artists being able to receive between one and $3,000, $17 go, $17, can you imagine? $17,000 goes really, really fast. So it's a very small number of artists that we can fund. And because the max, the, because the minimum amount of funding is $1,000, the, the highest number of artists that we can actually fund is 17 people. So, when you know that, you know, it makes you really think about putting your best foot forward in the application, making sure that you're really submitting something that, you know, that represents you, that is a strong representation of your work, and that really coincides with what CAHOOTS is all about. Um, because I'll, you know, I'll be really frank, we got almost 100 applications last year, and we were able to fund 17. And there were many cool scripts, remember, Lisa, that we just couldn't, we just had to say sorry, like, because we were literally out of money. So um, if you want to be finding yourself in that tier that does get the money, really, really work on uh, submitting something that is strong and thoughtful. A lot of artists get in that place where because it's a small application, they think, oh, they can do it last minute and just kind of put in a, you know, a not that great effort. That's not going to help you. Treat it as seriously as if it was a bigger application because you do have um, the odds of getting it are not incredibly high. So, you know, really put your best foot forward um, with it. Um, 
Is there anything else that I need to talk about right now? I just want to highlight the importance of not doing these last minute. <laughs> please, please, please don't. Um, I believe that artists are able to apply to 10 different ones. I'm not sure if that cap has changed, but all that information is on the site and in the web pages that I've uh, provided. But if you do like all 10 in one night, that <laughs> might not be the best idea. And I wouldn't necessarily uh, recommend just copying and pasting like your application, even if it's the same project that you're applying for to every single company. I would really recommend, again, researching the company and really looking at what aspects of your project and you as an artist fit into what they're looking for in regards to um, who they're awarding. So do your research, take your time. A lot of the recommending companies, they have later um, deadlines. So just schedule it out for yourself. Um, so you're not in, in a mad rush. <laughs> so, so James says you can apply for five. So they've changed oh, five. it. Okay. Yeah. They've changed it. Cause it used to be 10 and I knew somebody just two years ago who applied for 10 and got six. Yeah. Yes. Last year, I, as an individual artist applied to 10. So yeah. 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 Okay. So they have, so they have, uh, scaled it back a bit because up until last year, also you could apply for $5,000 and they've changed it to three. So, um, everything is kind of, you know, in the funding world, everything tends to get a little bit smaller. So, um, so if you know that you have five applications that, that can be processed and, and the way it is, the way that they're able to put that cap on it is that to apply for a recommender grant, you're doing it through the OAC, right? So you have to have an, you have to create an account with the OAC. So once you've applied five times, like they will, they will cut you off at that point. Um, so really pick wisely, you know, you don't have to apply for five. You could say, I want to do this with this company. This is the company that, you know, gets me or is really aligned with me. And I'm going to apply just to that company. And that's totally fine. But then just know that if you don't get it with that company, there are no other options, right? So if there are a few companies that you want to apply to, um, just, just make sure that they all are companies that would be interested in what you're doing. And as Lisa said, amend your application accordingly so that it's addressing each company, right? Um, for example, uh, if you were doing something that is dealing with, um, you know, that is dealing with disability, but you're also doing, but, but in that story, there are also themes that are around queerness, for example, right? Then if you were applying to buddies, you would highlight that this is a queer story and these are the themes. If you were applying to us or to like Tangled Arts or a company that has a disability mandate as well, then you might focus on the fact that this is a disability themed story, right? So you're making sure that whatever is most aligned with that company, that you're really stressing that that's part of the theme of what you're doing so that you're proving that there is a natural link between you and the company that you're applying to. So really think carefully. And there is um, a page on the OAC website and the link is, the link is in the chat um, that has the list of all the recommender companies and then just a little bit of info about them. So the company, what their priority groups are, so you know immediately if you fall into that and what their deadline is um, for your applications. And uh, maybe I could, can I just look at, can I share that right now? That yeah, I, uh, yeah. The, the list, I just shared yeah. it in the chat. Oh, great. Um, so if you see there in the chat, OAC RGTC list of recommenders, and you click on that, you will immediately get taken to that page and you'll see every company that is a recommender for this year. And you can find out what they're looking for in terms of priority groups. Okay. Um, awesome. Yeah, I think that's it. Okay. So now we're, I'm just going to take you through like the application process. Um, I am not, I obviously do not work for the OAC. So <laughs> if you do run into any issues on your end, 
whether you're applying to the recommender grant for CAHOOTS or another um, company, I have shared the OAC contact person for this program. Her name is Lucy. She is amazing and she is very helpful. So if you do run into any technical issues or you have a more general question about the RGTC that you're applying to, contact her. Um, if you have a specific question about the CAHOOTS recommender grant, um, you are more than welcome to uh, contact Tanisha or I, and we'll share our emails in the chat. It's literally Tanisha at cahoots.ca and Lisa at cahoots.ca. So let me just share my screen one second. Here we go. So I'm gonna start us off on the OAC homepage. So when you get here, um, this is just their homepage, you can either go straight to apply now or go to uh, the grants menu and go down to theater. Uh, if you click this, you'll see all the grants for the theater programs. And at the very top of the granting programs, you'll see the recommender grants for theater creators. And you can click there to learn more and get a list of all the recommenders um, that are for this year's um, docket. Um, but anywhere you go on the OAC site, um, whether you get lost in <laughs> a different grants program, you can always go back to the top of the page and click apply now, which will take you to the NOVA uh, application platform, which the Ontario Arts Council uses for all their granting um, applications. Now, if you're new to the OAC uh, NOVA platform, then you'll need to register for an account. And all you'll have to do is click the register here button and it'll take you to this short little question questionnaire page. And you'll either be um, given your username and you'll create your password or uh, you'll get a pop-up saying, please contact this person so that they can um, properly uh, register you because you may have uh, a, an application or um, you may have already registered for um, the Nova platform years ago, um, but you may have forgotten your username or your password. So that person that you'll contact will get that sorted for you. They're fairly quick, but please give them, you know, a few business days so that they can get back to you. They're dealing with a lot of um, influx, especially since this is a big granting time for the OAC. Um, if you already have a login or um, I'm already, <laughs> I'm just going to log myself out so I can come back in. But if you already have um, a register, you're already registered, you can log in straight away. And I'm just going to log in as my independent arts company so that you can take a look at what all that looks like from your end. So once you get in here, you'll see so many different sections. <laughs> On your own time, you can take a look at the Welcome to Nova announcement at the top. But for right now, I'm going to take you to where you can find the recommender grants application. So on the far left side of the screen, you'll see all of the funding opportunities. They're all listed by alphabetical um, names. So the recommender grants are all the way at the end. Um, there's the recommender grants for writers um, and theater creators. So if you are applying for the theater creator grants, choose this one by clicking apply. Uh, You'll first get uh, the eligibility requirements to make sure that you are able to apply. Uh, please read them through if, you, if you're not certain. Uh, I had an artist last year who resided in Quebec um, who thought she could uh, apply for the OAC and she couldn't. So please make sure you understand the eligibility requirements. It's pretty straightforward, but just make sure you do. Uh, once you've confirmed the above statement, you'll click apply and you'll be taken to um, your application after you click continue to application. 
um, this is where all your work is going to be done. And you'll have different tabs along the screen, which you will see in a moment. So the first one is your profile. If this you've applied in the past before and you've moved or your phone number has changed, please make sure you change all of this information because this is where the check will be mailed to. And if there's any problems, they will be reaching out either via email or phone. So make sure all of this is updated. All of this for me is not updated since I've moved. So um, what you would do if you need to change or put in your uh, correct information is go to profile and update profile. I'm not gonna do that right now. It's pretty straightforward just fill in the fields. Again, if you have any concerns or you come across some technical difficulties, please reach out to Lucy um, and she'll help you um, through whatever technical issues you may face. Uh, once you've verified all your profile information is correct, you're gonna go to the second tab where my cursor is, which is the recommender. And this is so fantastic this year. Um, they have not only provided, obviously, the recommending company and the deadline, but as well as the priorities. So please make sure before you click <laughs> the company that you're applying for that you read the priorities. Um, like we said, uh, you can submit up to five uh, applications per year, but once you open one application, it's only for one company. So if you want to apply for Cahoots and Be Current, just focus on one. So for right now, I'm going to just click on Cahoots. I cannot get a grant from Cahoots since I'm the managing producer, but for the purposes of right now, I'm just going to walk you through as if I'm applying for Cahoots. So once it's recognizing that I have, I'm applying for Cahoots, I will show you what's all the other um, tabs are. Thanks for, for waiting, everyone. <laughs> there you go. All right, so once uh, it's recognized that the recommending company um, is, which recommending company you're applying for, you'll go to project information. This is the simplest part of your application. You just have to put the project title and the amount that you are requesting from the OAC through the recommender. Uh, again, the minimum is a thousand and a maximum is 3000. This does not mean that you will get 3000 if you apply for 3000, that is up to the discretion of the company, um, but you can just put that in there. Uh, now, the start date of your project is the activity for which you are requesting the funding, and it cannot start before the deadline of the recommender. Um, so for us, it's November 1st, our deadline. If you were having, let's say, uh, rehearsals for your project on October 30th, that won't work. <laughs> so please make sure that any activity, any writing activity, any research activity um, that you are asking for money for support starts after the deadline. So it could start November 2nd, but you probably won't get the funds until after um, a few, few months. I think last year it took two months for us to get uh, the OAC to send artists funds. So there is a there is a little bit of a waiting time if you do get, if you are successful in the application. Um, the end date of your project, uh, it, it's just when your activity for the requested funding uh, is completed and it cannot be completed before six weeks after the deadline you applied to. And it must be completed after Janu uh, by January 14th, 2024. So that means that six weeks from November 1st, you should still be working on your project. It can't be done before that. And it can't, it must be completed before January 14th, 2024, which is a long time because <laughs> January, 2022 is just around the corner. Uh, so after you fill that out, please save your draft. Always make sure you're saving your draft at the bottom 
um, middle of your screen, it doesn't auto save. So don't rely on auto save here. Always save your draft. Uh, and then you'll go to your accessibility fund. So if you do uh, need um, supplementary funds to carry out this project, you can request project accessibility support. Um, so this can be if you're an artist who identifies as deaf or having a disability, if you're a group or a collective with one or more members who identify as deaf or having a disability, or if you are applying as an incorporated or organization um, with uh, artists who serve deaf artists and artists with disability. Um, please read the accessibility fund to see if like you are eligible. Um, if you're just a solo artist who identifies as a deaf artist or having a dis disability, you can definitely do this. Uh, the eligibility requirements is not um, too strenuous. So then going forward into your artistic merits, and these are the two questions that are uh, generally on every RGTC application. So although every company is asking the same things, again, I would recommend tailoring it to the specific companies that you are applying for. So for the first one, it's tell us about uh, your overall artistic work, history, and achievements. What is, a, what is important to you in your work, such as cultural influences, your identity, geography, community, language, et cetera, and why. And if you identify with one of the OAC's priority groups, which you can read on the OAC website, um, you are more than welcome to reference it here. Tanish is gonna talk a little bit more about how, approach, like how to approach these questions. So I'm not gonna get too much in the muck here. Um, but if you go over the maximum words, you can still write. It's just going to, um, at the very bottom here, where it says 300 words left, just turn red and say how much you're over. So just be aware of your maximum lengths. The second question all the RGTC companies are asking is what you are planning to do and what do you want to achieve with this project? And this is a maximum of 425 words. Um, what I've done in the past as an independent artist is uh, I've applied with one project to one company for a specific part of the development, and then another company with the same project for another part of the development. So you can do that too. Um, if you are applying for, let's say like two cahoots and you want the funding for um, just the writing and the research of it, that's great. And if you want uh, like a, to fund for readings, um, you can apply for a recommender grant with another company on that as well. So again, it doesn't have to be a copy paste every single application that you're sending to recommenders. It can be tailored for what you are looking for if you are applying for multiple um, uh, recommender grants. Now, moving on to the support material, this is where you will be able to upload your manuscripts, which is mandatory, um, and any other artistic examples. So those can include video files, sound files, uh, visual files. And as you can see here, these are all supplementary materials are not required. So if you don't have a video for um, the project that you're working on, you don't need to add it. Um, please, please, please follow what they're saying uh, in each of the comment boxes about what the file size is, the acceptable formats, all of that. Um, and if there is just a specific part of the file that you want um, the recommenders to view, please add that when you upload. And I'll, I'll show you um, how that looks like in, in just a second, but it just saves us a lot of time. <laughs> so if you upload a 28 minute video and you only technically want us to watch like 10 minutes to 15 minutes of the video, we don't have to watch the entire video. So please be specific if, if you are um, 
providing supplementary material. Um, when you do upload a, a video, it's going to show you this and you can just drag and drop the files. Um, once you upload a file, I don't have a file right now to upload, but once it's uh, recognized that the file is there, it's going to give you a dialogue box where you can fill out the name of the file, uh, artists involved, um, and again, what part of the file you want the recommender to look at. You can also provide Vimeo links. Um, you can't provide YouTube. It's strange. I don't know why. <laughs> That's an OAC question. But uh, if you do have a Vimeo link to a trailer of a project of a project that you've worked on, you can add that here. Audio files, please make sure that they're MP3 or WAV. And um, you can also include SoundCloud links as well, which is new this year. Um, in regards to your manuscript, the manuscript is the part that is mandatory because it allows recommenders to get to know your work. And even if you don't have, um, if like the project that you're applying for is not, you don't have any written material, a sample of something that you've written in the past works just as well. Um, we've had a lot of people who have submitted manuscripts for projects that are not script-based. So physically devised theater. Um, and they've still have been able to submit, you know, ideas um, and, you know, things that have come out of uh, previous rehearsals. So feel free to not be limited to just a script if that's not what your project is. Um, the, I, I believe you can, um, I think the maximum pages is 14 for your manuscript, it does not need to be that. <laughs> Again, a lot of recommenders are going through hundreds of applications. So if you have like a really great piece in your project that's only five pages long, cool. Um, if you can't, if you feel like you can't get your points across of your project in five pages, that's why you have the 14 page maximum. Um, and please make sure that you're following the format it helps it as an artist, I never understood that this and why it was a thing, but being on the other side of going through all the applications, I understand why it's tough to <laughs> go through applications that don't have a uniform um, to the other ones. So if they're not all written Ariel or Helvetica, if there's some manuscripts that are like, you know, 15, 18 size fonts and others are 10 size fonts. It's a lot. And what we do is we store all of the, we save all of the applications so that we can take a look and go back to them. So please make sure you are following the acceptable formatting and all of that because it saves us a lot of time and it makes our lives a lot easier while we're going through dozens of applications. Uh, the last part of the support material, which is um, required is your CVs, resumes, and bios. And it's just a maximum of four pages. So if you have 12 people on your team, um, bios are just acceptable. You don't have to submit, well, you can't really submit 12 resumes. So bios are fine. Um, if it's just you, we want to get to know you. So yeah, submit your resume, um, submit your bio. We, we want to get to know you. But again, you can tailor it to what project you're applying for. And then once you're done with all of this, again, you are going to save draft, always save draft. And you're going to go to the demographic information. And this is just for OAC to collect information for their stats. Um, so that they can, you know, develop programs, um, uh, granting programs uh, in the future that may not be available right now. So you have your age, your, how you identify, whether it's Francophone, a person with disability or a deaf person, if you're Indigenous, First Nation, Métis or Inui, um, what is your racial background, gender identity, if you identify as part of the LGBTQ2S community, 
um, if you're transgender and if you're uh, an immigrant to Canada. Once you're all done that, you're going to go to the declaration. And this is just making sure that everything that you have provided, you feel good about, and you are verifying your phone number and your email, because those are the two ways that uh, the OAC will contact you. You'll click all the terms and conditions boxes, and you can definitely read the terms and conditions of the grant applications, if you like, through these links. And once you're done that, you'll validate your application. Validating your application is like just a seal of approval so that you can submit, making sure that you've answered all the questions, you've submitted uh, the manuscript and your support materials, and that everything on your project information side is good to go. Um, I've been the artist on the other side, just trying to press submit, not understanding why I had to validate it. So please make sure you have to validate it. Sometimes you might get uh, a technical error um, where you can't submit. So that's why you can uh, contact Lucy um, and she'll help you if you've missed anything on your application. Once you press submit, it's uh, at the recommender's um, use now. So it'll live in your, um, your homepage, which will look like this. Let me just take a look. So all your applications will live on the um, top right column and you can see the status. So I have three RGTC drafts open for various companies and you can always go back to it. So if you're not ready to submit it, you can save drafts, leave the website and then come back to it once you wanna finish or if you've already submitted, it'll say submitted. Um, that's about it for walking through the application. Did I miss anything, Tanisha? Um, I think that was quite thorough. I'm just gonna add some stuff. Go for it. Um, so the support material, super, super important. Um, because it's what you're offering up as this is the example of my work, right? So that script, which is necessary, or if not a script, um, some sort of an explanation of the concept of what you're doing. Like if you're doing a piece that is devised or a piece that is a little bit more movement oriented, you can send in an explanation of what you're conceiving and that can serve in place of a dialogue based script. But, in, but make sure that it's clear. Um, but with regards to the script, it's really, really important. You're trying to grab the attention of the recommenders, right? So that script does not have to be the first 14 pages of the play. It can be anywhere in the play, but what it should be is 14 pages that really make people lean in and be like, oh, this is interesting. I wanna know what happens. I wanna know more about these people this story has already pulled me in, right? So you as the writer, um, you know, it can be hard to be objective about your own work because you're so close to it, but really take a look at it and think about what are the areas here, um, the, the, sec the excerpts of script that can really work. And it could be, if you decided say that you wanted us to provide a full 14 pages, it could be 14 consecutive pages, but you could, could submit excerpts. You could submit pages five to 10 and then pages 43 to you know 50, if that's what you wanted, as long as you make it clear that that's what it is so that when we're reading it, we're like, there suddenly seems to be a big gap here that doesn't make any sense. If you've made it clear, oh no, this is one section of the play, this is another section of the play, then that's totally fine. Um, but again, it doesn't have to be 14. I think it's really, really important that you're always thinking of putting your best foot forward, always knowing that people are reading a lot of stuff. If a company is getting 110 applications, um, it's really easy for the wash of words of scripts to, to become hard to distinguish unless those scripts are really standing out. So, um, 
So do your best. If you've talked to, if other people have read your scripts, if you've done readings or friends have read your scripts, like ask them, like what sections of my script do you think are really cool? Is there a particular scene that really jumped out at you? Having that kind of input might help you to make a choice as to what to submit. Um, and with regards to support material, I think a really basic kind of novice mistake that a lot of grant writers make when they're just starting is they think that they have to fulfill every possibility that a grant offers. So it's like, oh, they said I can submit an MP4. They said I can submit an MP3. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna submit everything. Don't do that. <laughs> Don't do that unless everything that you're submitting is great. Because what you don't want is for a strong application to end up being undermined or undercut by something that you throw in there that's not strong. So if you have, you know, eight, eight pages of really tight, cool writing, and then you throw in this really awful, badly filmed <laughs> video of a sort of reading that you did in your mom's basement, that is not that does not present the script well you've actually hurt yourself right so do not add audio visuals unless they are actually augmenting your application and making it better i have sat on juries and i cannot tell you how many times we've read something as a jury and thought this is really good and then put on the video or the the tape that they sent us and it's like oh Right, and then you start to think, okay, if this is what they think the execution could be like, or if this is execution that they're willing to share as strong, then you start to question the whole artistic judgment, right? So really be, really be smart about what you decide to include, including less, less is more a lot of the time. So just, just know that. And that's what I'll say there. So, this is the time to open for Q and A. So, if anybody in the Zoom room has any questions, you are more um, than welcome to put them in the chat, or you can come on screen or unmute yourself. You don't have to show your video um, and ask away. If you don't have any questions, that is okay. If you're viewing this on YouTube and you do have questions, uh, I wouldn't recommend putting in the comment section because Tanish and I do not check the YouTube page uh, as often um, as our email. So please email us at these emails I'll be putting in the chat. And if you have more general questions about the RGTCs, again, please contact Lucy at the OAC and she will help you with any um, technical issues or general recommender grant uh, questions. I would also say that sometimes it can be a little bit nerve wracking to be working on your first grant directly in the portal. So you can certainly answer those questions in a Word document, in your notes, like, you know what I mean? You don't have to, in that moment that you're composing them, do it in the portal. You can do it on your own in another, in another application. And when it's good, when it's edited, when it's ready, you can cut and paste it into the portal. Um, make sure that you are saving your drafts. If you don't, it's going to vanish. It is going to vanish. And also do not submit is the very last thing that you hit. If you hit submit before you're done, it is a nightmare to be able to undo that application. So, um, and that's why they have the validate application. That's why they have part. the validate. And if you do, and when you when you go through validate, it will tell you if there are any questions that you've skipped. If there, you know, you know how it is on most things on the internet where before you place your order, whatever, it'll tell you that certain fields are missing or certain things aren't clear. So that validate will let you know whether there's a problem. And then if, it, if it's all clear, then you submit. But please don't submit while you're in mid process because you can't undo it. And then you've submitted an incomplete application. Yeah, like if you, if you think you're done and you validate it and then you're like, oh, I'm ready to submit. And then an hour later, you're like, oh my gosh, I forgot to add that video link. 
you can't you can't redo it yeah it's a headache too so um yeah don't submit until you are sure you're ready absolutely um and and i think my biggest piece of advice would be if you have if you have a project that you're either working on on now or have conceived that you want to work on that you really really believe in um you know go for it literally the worst thing that can happen is that you don't get it and then you can try again um but the best thing that can happen is that you get three thousand dollars so i i think that uh you know taking the chance is is always a good thing and um you know, it is, it, this really is the entry point for grants um, in the OAC and anywhere, really. Any of the Fed, any of, any of the government funded grants, this is the simplest one. And if you're just kind of dipping your toes into what it is to write a grant, um, just the process of writing the RGTC is a good process because it makes you have to really crystallize in your mind, what is my idea? what is my idea? How would I put this down on paper? How would I pitch this to somebody? Um, can I really succinctly explain what it is that I want to do? And that's, and that's a really good thing as an artist to be able to do. So, you know, I, I never suggest applying for grants with something that you don't really have a passion for that is clear in your mind. But if there is a project that you really think, yeah, it would be, it would be great to have a couple of thousand dollars um, or even a thousand dollars that covers like a chunk of my rent so I can spend this month writing and not having to work as many catering shifts or barista shifts or whatever, I can actually spend this time writing. It's a great opportunity to be able to do that. Um, so if you have something that you believe in, I would say apply November 1st for us at 1 p.m., not 5 p.m., not 11.59 p.m. November 1st at one. I don't want to be the person who has to break your heart when you try to submit it at four in the afternoon and it doesn't take it. Okay, so just keep your eyes on those deadlines. Every company has set its own deadline as far as the date is concerned, but I believe it's a 1 p.m. deadline, oh, no matter what company. Okay, so that can, all, that can be confusing because different grants have different deadlines. This one is 1 p.m. no matter what the date. So make sure that you know that. So if there are no questions, then I think we can probably, um, you're welcome, James. And thanks for letting us know um, that the limitation on uh, grants had been changed from five to 10. We're super, super busy. And so sometimes that information happens and it just, you just don't notice it or you, you know, it's, it's too much to keep track of it all. Um, you're welcome, Zammer, you're welcome. Um, and, and I really hope that, that either you apply, you know, or if this, if this session has made you realize, you know what, not quite ready to apply yet, that's totally cool too. There's no, there's no time limit or rush to do it. Um, maybe you do it the next go around and that's, that's lovely. Um, um yeah. I also just want to add another thing. Um, if anybody is applying to other grants, like for at this the Canada Council level or the Toronto Council level, um, I am very much willing to talk to you about your granting application. So my email is in the chat. Feel free to reach out to me. I know the budget stuff for a lot of <laughs> the other granting applications can be intense and intimidating, especially if you haven't done it before. So um, I am more than happy to help anybody out who is in need of that. So the RGTC doesn't have a budget part. So lucky for all those applicants. <laughs> yeah, and they changed that. It used to, when I applied for what was then the Theater Creators Reserve in I think 2007, um, you did have to supply a budget and it was so, and it was so funny because tiny. it was a tiny budget. It was like, I'd like three months to pay my phone. I'd like three months of internet and I'd like two months of rent. It was like the tiniest budget, yeah, but it yeah. was, but it was cool. It was cool to be actually be able to say, this is how I would spend that $4,000, right? This yeah. is what you're helping me cover. And being able to think that way is it, it's good because then you can apply that same thinking to larger budgets. 
Exactly. Um, so thank you very much for joining us. And if you have colleagues and friends who are interested in the RGTC, but wasn't able, but weren't able to be here, please let them know that this will be going up on the Cahoots YouTube page and people are welcome to, to check it out. Yeah, good luck on applying. Thanks everyone. Best of luck. Have a great day, everyone. Thank you.